Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I've got a bone conduction headset for you, which not only has a Bluetooth connection, but it also comes with 16 gigs of onboard storage. And why is that interesting? Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, then let the intro explain it to you. I guess now you get the idea, right? So here I have the Nyanka Runner Diver bone conduction headphones which were designed to be used for exercise both on land and in the water. Bone conduction technology, for those of you who don't know, allows us to hear music through the resonances in the bones in front of our ears. And it can be beneficial for a lot of reasons, but the best thing about it from our perspective is that the headphones won't block our ear canals, giving us a better awareness of our surroundings. And that's where the runner part comes into play, as running outside with traffic and other people around can be a risky business, so not being completely isolated from the world around you might be a good thing at times. So that's the runner part. But what about diving? First of all, if we want to use headphones for swimming, we need two things. One is obviously a waterproof design, so water won't damage our headphones when used in the pool or in the sea. And the IP68 rating of these headphones takes care of that first criteria. Requirement number two is the capability of playing music offline. It is crucial as Bluetooth signals are blocked by the water, so as soon as you submerge your head in water, you will lose the wireless connection with your source device. And that's why the Nyanka Runner Diver has an MP3 player with 16 gigabytes of storage on board, so it can play music on its own without the need of having a phone connected to it. Onto the general design, the Runner Diver is more or less similar to other bone conduction headphones. We get a titanium alloy frame, which is flexible but also durable enough, and it keeps the headset securely in place around the neck. We also have a head unit behind the ears, and in front of our ears there are the speakers. And these speaker units have a somewhat unusual shape with these fins. The manufacturer calls it a bionic design, but what really matters to me is that it actually works as it makes the fit tighter and more secure, which comes in handy especially when swimming. I experienced no chafing from the neckband, the headphones didn't budge regardless of whether I was wearing a swim cap or not. However, putting a swim cap over the headphones will glue them to your head, so that's how I would use them especially if you want to do tumble turns or dive in the pool every now and again. I had no comfort issues when running or training either, and I believe that the nice and soft skin-friendly silicone coating plays a big role in that too. So the design is perfect for active use, indoors, outdoors, on the road or in the water. And the IP68 rating can give you confidence in terms of the longevity of the headphones. When swimming in open water, for example, your headphones are not only better be waterproof, but there is also sand and dirt that might be factors you have to deal with. And the number 6 in the IP rating indicates that the runner diver is indeed dust tight, while the number 8 means that the headphones have protection against complete continuous submersion in water. And in case you get confused, you will find IPX8 on the box, on the website and in fact on all marketing materials as well, but my source at the company confirmed that the headphones are indeed IP68 rated dust and waterproof. And moving on a bit from running and diving, another sport the runner diver is a good match for is cycling. And that's because situational awareness provided by the open ear design is probably the most important when it comes to listening to music while cycling on the road. The comfort here is great again, I had no issues using my helmet and my sunglasses along with the headphones. But keep in mind that there might be some bike helmets or even sunglasses out there that are not compatible with the wraparound design of the Nyanka headphones, so your mileage might vary. On to battery life, the Runner Diver promises to last up to 10 hours on a single charge, according to the official website. I tested the Bluetooth mode with some music listening and watching YouTube at around 50 to 60% volume most of the time. But I also turned it up here and there, as I found the headphones not loud enough, but more about it in a minute. And during the battery life test, I even turned on multipoint for an hour or two, so the headphones were connected to two phones at the same time. 
And with this mixed use, I was able to run the headphones for 14 hours and 9 minutes, which is quite an impressive performance if you ask me. In MP3 mode, where I was playing my own MP3 and FLAC files from the built-in flash drive, I got 9 hours and 33 minutes. I'm not sure about the volume levels in MP3 mode, as there is no way to really gauge that. We get no smartphone app and there are no LEDs or anything else that could help with that. All we get is a voice prompt when we reach maximum volume. But I was using the headphones closer to max volume, more often than not, as the volume can greatly vary between the different files and formats you have stored on the built-in flash drive. The other interesting fact is that the headphones stay connected to your phone even in MP3 mode, as long as you stay within the range of course. I do not necessarily see the point of this, as maintaining a wireless connection can take a big chunk out of the battery life, and that is indeed what happened here. Not that the 9 plus hours of playtime is bad by any means, and you can always turn off Bluetooth on your phone too. And let's say in the pool, you are better off disabling Bluetooth on your phone, as otherwise the runner diver will keep connecting and disconnecting, depending on how far away you swim from your phone. And you will get the voice prompt, connected and disconnected every single time that happens, which can become quite annoying after like 20 laps or so. But as long as you are in this so-called music or mp3 mode, the only file formats that are supported are mp3 and FLAC. mp3s are ok up to 320 kilobits per second, and I also played 24-bit FLAC files up to bit rates at around 1500 kilobits per second without a problem. I couldn't really make higher bit rates work, but in my opinion the sound quality of the bone conduction tech does not justify using higher quality files anyway, so that's not a problem at all in my eyes. What I have issues with is the fact that playlists are not supported and you cannot really organize your files in folders or albums either, as the headphones can only play the files in alphabetical order from the root folder of the onboard storage. Not the most sophisticated mp3 player we got here in terms of functions and compatibility. Another letdown is the way we have to copy those music files onto the headphones. We get this proprietary magnetic charging cable, which is also your only option to download files from your computer to the onboard storage. The transfer speeds are extremely slow by today's standards, so if you want to fill up the entire 16 gigs in one go, you better give yourself some time to make that happen. This painful process made me feel like I was back in the early 2000s, where there was no other option but to copy files through a wired USB connection or something similar. But come on guys, it's 2022 and there are better and more convenient solutions for transferring files now. For example, any of those wireless technologies like Wi-Fi or even Bluetooth. Now, we don't have Wi-Fi on the Nanka Runner Diver, but the headphones come with Bluetooth version 5.2 on board, so that could be put in use. But no, the Bluetooth connection cannot be used for transferring files, as it can only stream music from your source device to the headphones. And in terms of codec support, we only got SBC. There is no AAC, let alone anything more advanced, such as Aptex or LDAC. But that's a common thing with open-ear headphones in my experience, and regardless of the omission of AAC support, the headphones will work with both Android and iOS perfectly fine. We got NFC on board, so pairing can be automatic and hassle-free, which is a big plus. Not that there was anything wrong with manual pairing, as I found it quick and easy, but having NFC as an option is always a good thing. I had not experienced any connection issues or signal dropouts during my tests. In terms of delay, audio and video are always in sync when watching movies, and I got acceptable results when playing games too. In Bluetooth mode, we can connect to two devices simultaneously, which means that multipoint use is supported. Setting it up is as easy as it gets, it works without any hiccups, and switching between the two connected devices is smooth, and it can happen automatically, let's say when a phone call comes in. So at the end of the day, we get most wireless connectivity options we would expect from any headset that costs around $170, except for high-res codec support. And now here's a quick audio sample for you from the mic on the Nanka Runner Diver. So this is what you can expect from the headphones in terms of audio quality when it comes to making phone calls in a quiet room. Honestly, I've heard louder and more clear voice transmissions before, but when some background noise comes into play, the headset can collect a few points for its ability to filter out those surrounding noises. And since these headphones were designed to be used outdoors, here's a quick outdoor test. 
So this is what you get from the man caught on the diver when trying to make a phone call from the side of a fairly busy road. In terms of controls, we get a power on-off button on the left speaker unit and the volume rocker on the right main unit. Between these two buttons, you can control all sorts of functions such as play, pause, volume up and down, track forward and backward. You can activate your voice assistant, you can switch between Bluetooth and MP3 modes and of course you can also manage your phone calls with these physical buttons. There is nothing missing in terms of functionality but there is no smartphone app so there are no further options to customize our headphones. Not that there is much I would want to customize or change, but for example over-the-air firmware updates could prove to be useful in the long run. But there is no app as of making this review, and I don't think that will change any soon. And now let's see what we can expect from the Nanka Runner Diver from a sound quality point of view. Well, bone conduction technology has never been famous for its deep and punchy bass, and we are definitely not getting that much of a low end here either. In fact, there is barely any bass present in the sound, which has only one real advantage, and that's the almost complete lack of those tickling vibrations we tend to get from other bone conduction headphones. But let's just forget about the lacking bass for a second, as there is a lot to like about the sound of the runner diver further up in the frequency range. We get clear vocals, detailed instruments, sparkling highs, a relatively wide sound stage and precise enough imaging. It's not audiophile sound by any means, but the combination of freedom, awareness and music can be a really powerful mix during physical activity. And the clear sound makes the runner diver great for listening to podcasts and watching videos, as human voices are easier to understand without too much of that bass, which would only add muddiness to the sound. At or close to maximum volume, things get a little too harsh and the tiniest bit of distortion and vibrations start to creep in. I only wish the maximum volume was a bit higher, but that could probably be achieved only at the expense of even more distortion and more vibrations, so all in all I'm okay with what we got here. All that said, you might want to wear an earplug when swimming to make sure you can hear the sound properly at all times. And thankfully Nyanka gives us a pair of earplugs in the box. In order to improve the sound quality and have more bass, I would recommend plugging in your ears when running or cycling too, but that would go against the basic principle of the open-air design and could potentially be risky as well. Using the runner diver in a crowded gym is not a good idea in my opinion, especially if there is allowed music blasting from the speakers at all times. Maybe the earplugs could come in handy in that scenario. And now let's put this performance into some context. Compared to the boxy and compressed sound of the older Nine Coroner Pro, the improvement is obvious. The whole presentation opens up and we get a more spacious and a more detailed sound as a result. We might lose a bit of a low-end impact, but at the same time vibrations are also reduced significantly and maximum volume got a bit higher as well. The runner diver have a definitely more mature and a more enjoyable sound across the board. And even though the Shox Open Run Pro comes up short in terms of features, as it can only be used with a wireless connection on a land and it's not completely waterproof either, its sound quality is still considered one of the best, if not the best amongst bone conduction headphones. And it is superior to that of the Nyanka Runner Diver, but only if you prefer a warmer sound with a more powerful bass. Everything sounds a touch more natural as well, due to the better extension in the lower registers. But both the mids and the highs sound more detailed and open on the Nyanka in my opinion. Maximum volume is higher on the shocks by a hair, but here I have to mention those strong tickling vibrations again, which some of you will find more uncomfortable or downright annoying on the Open Run Pro. If you ask me, I will take comfort over bass extension any day of the week. And talking about shocks brings up one more thing and that's the lack of a hard case or at least a silicone pouch as usually either one or the other comes in the box with shocks headphones but we don't get any of those things for the Nanka runner diver.
And in conclusion, I have to say that Nanka keeps delivering the good stuff with their multifunctional open ear sport headphones, such as the Runner Diver. Swimming, cycling, and running are the three main scenarios where I found them the most practical and useful. So instead of Runner Diver, Nanka could have easily called these guys something like the Nanka Triathlete Pro, but that's just me having a strong bias towards triathlon. And since MP3 players and all sorts of headphones are indeed banned from most triathlon races, all we have left is using these kind of devices in our training. And that's what I did over the last couple of weeks indeed. And I found the Runner Diver a great companion during my training sessions, either in the water or on land. Good enough sound, great build quality, exceptional fit and comfort, extremely long battery life, and again, let's not forget about road safety. And of course, there is the possibility of using the headphones in all sorts of scenarios without having to worry about damaging them. And even though the $170 might not sound cheap at all, if you think of it as getting two separate headphones for the price of one, that can easily put the Nanka Runner Diver up on the highly recommended shelf in my opinion. That said, you can still get the Runner Pro for around $120, so you can get the same functionality for less money. However, the storage is twice as big on the new Runner Diver, the Bluetooth is more up-to-date, the battery life is longer, the sound is more enjoyable, and I also found the new design more comfortable in all scenarios. And even if there was no other difference, that improved comfort and fit in itself is something I would be happy to pay the extra price for. And this was my review of the Nanka Runner Diver Bone Conduction Headphones. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments or questions, you know what to do. Thanks for watching, see you next time.